I know y'all probably thought I forgot about poor little Hannah Montana. And I didn't forget about her. I've just been busy with other stuff and haven't had a chance to get around to starting on her. <laughs> I do have a plan for her, though. I went through all of the pages, and they've got numbers on them. And then I went through my cards that I want to put in here, because I am going to make it sort of a scrapbook for some cards that I've received over the years. And I pulled out some of my very earliest ones. These are all from the 90s, as far as I can tell. Um, some of them didn't have dates on them, so I wasn't sure if they were 90s. But they're, they're right around that area from the mid-90s. There may be a couple of early 2000s in here accidentally. But most of them had dates, fortunately, so um, I got them in there. And then I just arranged them out on the pages like I wanted them. And then I numbered each stack. You know, this stack has a six, so it's going to go on the page with the six on it. And, you know, that way I can remember which cards I wanted on which pages um, without having to stuff them in there because it got too fat. So... That is that. And it did make a difference because, you know, there's different little things on the pages. They're, some of them have uh, fold-outs and then some have pockets. I wanted to arrange the cards I chose for each page around those different elements. So that's why I um, took the time to lay them out like that. For the first page, I have some postcards. These are from the early to mid-90s when I um, first started doing rubber stamping and we got together with a group of us once a month for our little stamp club meeting. They would send out postcard reminders for the meetings and I saved um, some of those postcards. I don't know that I saved all of them. I saved quite a few. Anyway, I chose the ones that I want to put and that's what I want to put here first. And I've decided what I'm going to do is use this postcard scrapbook paper and stick down on there and I will probably tear it and do it in a uh, collage way and then I will put the postcards on it and you know I've, I've got them kind of laid out how I want them or how I think I do anyway like that then I started thinking okay well how how do I want those on there? Because they're all different colors. A couple of them are, let me see, let me get these. There's some neon ones. You know, color-wise, they don't make sense. But I wanted to do something else because um, this is kind of boring. I don't really want to paint over the background. I'm going to use, I'm going to use a little bit of wet media in this book, but it's going to be predominantly dry media, I believe. I don't think I want it all painty and art journal-y. I want it more, almost more scrapbooky, but not really traditionally scrapbooky. I don't know what I want, you can tell. But I thought at first that I might use some paper, you know, something like that, and just put that behind each postcard to make a really boring, I don't think I had that one for that one. I don't know which one I cut that for. Maybe that one. Yeah to make, you know, a really boring border like that. And that was totally uninspired and I hated it. Then I thought, well, I would really like to be able to see the back of the postcard because it's got handwritten notes on the back. So I thought I would take this paper and like make a little pocket and slip each one in a pocket. Yeah, I could do that. Um, you know, that way I could pull it out and look at it. I could also tape them down with some washi tape, hinge them in so that I could flip them over. I thought about photo corners, you know, little photo corner deals that you use in scrapbooks. And I thought I might do that, and I found online this website that um, gave instructions for how to make your own, they're almost kind of origami-ish photo holders. And I will I hope I remember to put a link up for that. I think it was on a blog somewhere. I just made a couple to see if I was going to like them. But I think I do. Because if I do this, you know, I can do a color that kind of coordinates with each card. 
and they will hold down in here secure, but it's still possible to slip them out so that I can take them out and look on the back. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So, you want to know how to make these? Well, of course you do. <laughs> you would be crazy if you didn't, because these are just fun. Okay, I'm going to show you how to make them. Um, let me find a square piece of paper. Here's one. Okay, let's just use this one. Here we go. Oh, I need to zoom in, don't I? Let me zoom. Okay, you start with a square piece of paper. This one is too large, and I forgot what size I started with. All right, let's just wipe this off. I don't know. I'm thinking this was about a post-it note size, maybe three inch. Let's see what that looks like. So I'm just going to trim this to about three inches square. Ooh, now that I look at it, that might have been four inches. That's all right. Okay, three inch square. And first thing you're going to do is turn the printed side down, fold it in half. Doesn't matter which way because it's a square. <laughs> Just fold it in half, open it back up. Now what you're going to do, and this is perhaps the only tricky part of the whole thing, is you want a crease at the top, on the top right and the bottom left, about halfway between the center crease and the edge. Make sense? So what I'm going to do is just take this edge on the top right, move it to the center, and make just a little crease right there. Not all the way down, just paint it at the top. And do the same for the bottom left. Fold this edge over to the center. Make sure it's in the center. There we go. And pinch it. And that's P-E-E-N-C-H. Pinch. That's what we say down here in the south. You pinch it. So now you've got something like this. You've got your center fold. You've got your little pinch at the top, your little pinch at the bottom. Now what you're going to do is take that... Um, crease at the top at the crease at the bottom you want to just fold this over till they meet so I'm just going to line up that on the edge where my crease is to this edge where the crease is and I have to hold it up to my face to do that because I can't see so give me a second there it is okay so that crease is lined up with that crease is it really yeah, it is. Just like that. And then you fold it. And that's really uncomfortable for me. That is not symmetrical. It makes no sense. I don't like it. It's painful. <laughs> I don't like that. I like to fold things in half and for it to make sense. This doesn't make sense. So in half, your little pinch marks halfway across. I said it right that time. Pinch. Fold it over so the two little areas meet and then crease. So there you have it. Now you've got these four little triangles here. It's four white triangles or the back side of your paper. You just want to fold each of those over. You'll have two on this side. Flip it over. You'll have two on this side. Now it's going to start to make a little bit more sense. Now you see the shape you have? Okay, that makes sense. That's an actual shape, but that's symmetrical. Yeah, I can go there. So what you want to do now is hold on to one corner. It doesn't matter which one, this one or this one. I just, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to just hold this one with my left hand. What I'm going to do now is just hang on to that corner, and I'm going to take these other three triangles that I folded, and I'm going to tuck them onto the inside. So I folded them over to the outside, you know. Now I just want to move them to the inside. Like that. So 
So now they're over on the inside, right? Now, three triangles on the inside, one on the outside. Now, I'm going to fold my opposite end over to meet my little triangle here that got left out. Like that. See what I did? And then I'm going to tuck that last triangle in like that to hold it. And that's what makes the little, whoops, the little pouch. And if you want to put a little dab of glue right there, or right there, wherever it is, you know, you can put your little dab of glue to hold it down. But that makes your little photo corner. And then, you can put, oh yeah, this was bigger. There we go. I think that is going to be too big. I wonder what size I made these. I made these, what did I make this? Three inch? Let's try two inch. Okay. Cut it down. Maybe that's what it was. Two inch. just seems small. Okay. Fold it in half. And then pinch the top right. And I can't see it. There we go. Pinch the bottom left, bottom left, top right, fold them over so they meet. I have to pull it up here so I can see. Uh, yeah, fold them over so they meet, and they do. Crease it. Fold all of your four triangles. Two on this side, two on this side. So there you've got your little Diwali. It looks a little misshapen to me. I don't know if I did that right. Okay, hold on to one of the corner triangles and then tuck the other three in. Like that. Fold this over, and take my last triangle that I didn't tuck in, and do like that. And there we have it. Yeah, I think that's a better size, two inch. That's what I'll do. So, I'll do that. I'm going to make little um, photo corners out of some scrapbook papers, I think. Um, or something, I don't know. Anyway, and then I will um, glue the photo corners down to my page and then slip my um, postcards in there so that I can pull them out and I could look at the notes on the back. And that is my plan. So, I'm going to go work on that now. Okay, I'm ready to start my first spread. And I um, just sewed the first two pages, and it took two coats. I was a little concerned about this because I know Claudia had um, an issue with the pattern showing through her gesso. And with one coat, mine did. You can see in the middle of both of these pages. Well, I don't know if you can see. I'm filming at night in bad lighting, so you just got to trust me. But yes, you can still see the um, some of the image in the middle because that just has one coat but I put a second coat around the edges and it covered um, really well and I just used my homemade gesso for that so that worked okay and I just tore around the edges of these two pieces of scrapbook paper and I think I'm going to stick them down like that like that 
And um, but before I do that, I want to color the the background because I don't like that. I don't want the white showing through. So I grabbed some of these distressed reinkers, and there's always at least one that's leaking. Always, always, always. Um, all right. I'm just gonna kind of do this. acrylic paint I wasn't going to use much wet media on this, didn't I? Isn't that what I said? <laughs> Clearly, I lied. <laughs> I didn't lie. I just changed my mind. Okay. Nobody freak out, because I'm going to... I'm going to try something weird. It's going to either work or it's not, and, you know, I'm okay either way. I got some pan pastels the other day, just a couple of basic colors, and I'm wondering what will happen if I can ever get into the package. That's what I'm wondering. Oh, there we go. Uh, oops, excuse me. I'm also wondering what will happen if I um, put some of these on there. Uh, my tripod. My tripod got all out of whack. Is that right? Oh, there we go. I'm filming at an odd angle to try to minimize the shadows on the um on my work area and it's uh kind of weirding me out. Alright, now here we go with these. And you're supposed to put them on, you know, with the little spongy thing, which I didn't bother with. And instead, I'm going to try, I wonder if, what would happen if I just use a stipple brush. It's pretty. A lot of color. Okay. Go light. I just want some here and there. Now I need something green. See, I've got a little bit of, um, is that the way? I keep putting them the wrong way. No, that's the wrong way. This is the right way. I have a little bit of red here. I have a little bit of green. There's a little bit of weird blue. The postcards I'm putting on here are just all over the place. Their colors don't make sense. So I'm gonna, just going to ignore those and kind of kind of see what I can do with these. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm liking that. And I think I'm going to glue her down. Now, I think what I'm going to do is try this weird glue I got at the Japanese dollar store place the other day. I'm pretty sure it's nori paste or something very similar. So, I am going to just pretend that it really is and put some on.
Okay. Yep, looks good. Okay. Well, I like that. Now that paste is going to act like a sealer for those pan pastels, so I don't have to put any other kind of sealer or fixative over that because I mixed the paste in fairly well. So they are good to go. And it's not completely dry yet. Um, so one thing about these pastes, they do dry pretty slow. They're made to dry slow like that. And that's okay. They are, um, we have good, really good adhesion. So, yeah. I'm happy with my, my dollar store paste I got there. Alright. I think I want something like maybe this Distress Stain that I got the other day. It's brand new. I wonder what would happen if I did something like this. And then this. You know what? Okay. Do a little, just a few drippies over here. I think what I'm going to do is just edge it. Everything looks better with a little yellow ochre on it. Oh, <laughs> there's an easy way to open it. <laughs> yeah, I find it on my last container. <laughs> Alrighty, should probably edit that one out. I'm kind of just doing this in a window pane shape here because that's pretty much the layout of the cards that are going to go on here. And since I did put pan pastel over that paste, which was pretty much dried, I am going to shoot a little bit of a fixative on there. I'm just going to use this. Um, fix squirt in the house stuff. Alright. Now, I'm going to let that dry and uh, get my postcards ready to go on there. Okay, my first spread is done. Um, I did my background, and once that all dried, then I folded up a bunch of these little origami um, photo corner things, which I think are actually bookmarks now that I think about it. I'll have to go back and look. I'll find the link for the blog or whatever that I found these on. And I think they made them bigger and used them as like a little bookmark to slip over the corner of your page. 
but I made photo corners out of them and I like them I just got some different kinds of um, uh, scrapbook papers and things this is a washi paper these I just got in a um, happy mail from Gina Aaron's and it, she sent a couple of packages of these washi paper strips and they were long 24 inch strips and they all just happened to be two inches wide which was exactly what I need because these are all two by two so that was perfect um, but that's what I did just kind of to coordinate a little bit with the cards because uh, the cards are just you know of such a wide variety of color that it, there's not really anything I can do to make them cohesive but I think the um, corners having corners on all of them and everything kind of makes it work I like it anyway so there is spread number one moving on to spread number two and stack O cards number two and in here I've got um, this card and envelope which is very pretty and then this card and this card and these are made by are these all the same person nope two different people um, but I like them they all kind of go together and that's kind of sort of what I want here I'm still not quite sure how I'm thinking this needs to go there maybe and maybe this one here and I like both of these so I'm just kind of mimicking the little layout that's already there I could do that uh-huh and then put a something here and a something here and do uh, something with that or I don't know anyway that's where I am with that one I'm gonna stare at it for a little while longer and uh, see what I come up with and then I will get busy on it oh yeah so that'll be a different video so um, right the end <laughs>